Oh, to be a dragon soaring through a sunset sky. Hi, it's Erin. We're setting up April in my bullet journal today, and if you're thinking this looks a little bit different to my usual, you would be absolutely right. I got way out of my comfort zone for this setup. There's a bit of a story here, actually. I was hanging out with my friend Jacqueline, and she brought these cute little canvas magnets to our painting date that we had. I painted these little clouds on them, and then I thought, wait, wouldn't that be amazing with a dragon on it? The silhouette of a dragon kind of flying across the sunset? Wait, that could be a journal theme. I did those clouds with watercolour, so in my members only livestream when we were testing out ideas for this April setup, I did this one in the back of the journal with watercolour, and I kind of felt like it's okay, but it could be better. So I tested again with gouache this time, and I was like, yep, we're, we're onto something here. This looks so much more fun. This video on how to paint clouds from Ogigia Art was so important to this process for me, I learned so much. So I'll make sure that's linked in the description in case you want to watch that tutorial as well. So clearly I went into this with kind of an idea of what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure about colours though, so I asked my channel members to vote, and we decided on a purple and orange colour scheme for our sunset. But before we get to any painting, I'm putting down the calendar page first, and I'm going way back to basics here with just a really simple top to bottom linear calendar. It has a column here with the initial for each day of the month, and then a column for the number, and then just some space to write any events or reminders that I need for each one of those days next to it. I'm using some white washi tape here. I got this from Muji when I was in Sydney last, and I'm going to run out during this video, so it's lucky I'll be back in Sydney in a couple of weeks' time. I'll hopefully get some more, maybe a few rolls this time. I'm using that washi tape to mask off the areas that I'm going to be painting in so they'll have a nice crispy clean edge along the sides. The entire left page is going to be my cover page, basically just a big painting, and there's also a panel on the right side of the right page that's going to be for some painting as well, just next to the calendar. I'm using the wet on wet technique here, so I'm just putting some clean water down on the paper first before I get in with any paint. This journal has watercolour paper, so it can take a little bit of water, but I'm still trying to go easy on it, but this will make it a lot easier to blend all my colours together. And then I'm going to jump into my paint colours and mix up a really nice bright orange. And I'm going to start working that colour along the bottom half of the painting. This is going to be a gradient, kind of a colour changing effect, so at the very bottom it's going to be very red-orange. In the middle of this section it will be sort of yellow, it will go orange again, and then as we move up the page it's going to fade into purple. Hopefully it's that really dramatic kind of sunset effect like you'd see if there's been a storm a little bit earlier in the day, or if there's a storm coming maybe, sometimes that's when you get a really vibrant sunset. I actually only have a really small set of gouache paints, mine is the Winsor & Newton primary colours set, which means I've only got six colours, and that means I have to mix all of my own colours myself, but because I'm still very new to this, I actually think that mixing my own colours is really good practice for me, so I don't mind too much. I noticed in her video that Ogigia was using a flat brush most of the time, or most all of the time, so I'm kind of trying to do that too, which is a bit out of my wheelhouse as well. I'd normally use a round brush, but we're challenging ourselves today. And these horizontal lines at the places where the colours mix, I think are what really takes this from looking like a basic sky to looking like a sky, you know? At the moment, because I'm putting wet paint on top of wet paint, it's going to kind of bleed and run those colours together a little bit, but I will come back once this is dry and add some more layers as well so that everything is a little bit more defined. We're going to switch to the panel on the right side now, and I want it to somewhat match up with the other one, but they don't have to look exactly the same. I've planned out where my washi tape sits to make sure that these panels start and finish at the same point on each page so they will match up, and from a graphic design standpoint, they'll look very clean and nice next to each other. They also match where the top and bottom of the calendar spaces are, so everything's going to feel very nicely lined up across this whole spread. Recently I made a video about how I've been in a bit of a journaling slump, and I'm still finding that that's somewhat true. I've been better throughout March so far, it's about halfway through the month at the time that I'm recording this, but I'm trying to go really easy on myself and make my journal as easy as possible to use, so in this video I'm actually going to only set up three spreads. The cover page and calendar page that we're working on now, there'll be a functional spread after this, and then the first weekly will be the third one. Because I've been using less spreads in my monthly setups overall, I'm finding that I'm not getting through this journal as quickly as I normally would, but I still would like to finish it at the six month point of this year. So I've been playing around with adding junk journal spreads and adding memory keeping spreads into this journal as well. And I'm actually really enjoying that. So that's helping me to pick up my journal a bit more often as well, which is a wonderful thing. 
That said, if you're not here for the painting hijinks, there are links in the description and along the progress bar of the video down below to the different chapters for different pages. So if you want to get to some more functional stuff, you can use those to navigate ahead and you don't have to watch quite so much painting. <laughs> While this is drying, I thought I'd jump in with a nice light grey Tombow. This is the N89, it's my very favourite. And I'm just using it to highlight every second line of the calendar so it's a little bit easier to see where the space is for writing but also where each day starts and ends on the calendar. I deliberately wanted to do this while I still had the washi tape on the page because it would give me a nice hard clean edge at the right side there. And now that these paintings on the left and right have dried down a little bit, I can jump back in and go over the top with more layers of gouache and they will be mostly opaque on top of that previous layer. So underneath was mostly just streaky colours and now I'm going to jump in and add some fluffy clouds instead. I'm really not here to give you a tutorial on this because I don't really know what I'm doing myself but the wonderful thing about clouds is that they're so organic and they're never the same shape twice so anything you do can't really be wrong but there are some conventions based around where the sun would be positioned in your painting that determine where the light would hit and which parts of the clouds would be darker and which parts would be lighter so I'm trying to follow those. I did get those from the tutorial that I've linked in the description too so if you want more information on those I will point you in the direction of someone who can tell you better than I can. Really what I'm going for here is some contrast so I'm adding some darker clouds I'm going to come back and add some highlights over those soon as well and likewise down the bottom so we're doing deep purple clouds up the top over the purple area and we're going to do some bright red orange clouds down the bottom in front of the orange area. I'm not using a huge amount of different things to make this layout happen but just in case you wanted to get your hands on anything that I am using there are links to all of the items in the description so you can find those for yourself. Some of those links may be affiliate links which means if you make a purchase through them I will make a small commission to say thank you for sending you to that company and I also have a whole bunch of discount codes down in the description as well so if you want to save some money make sure that you check those out before you do any stationery shopping or art shopping. This is such a satisfying part of the process, just peeling up the washi tape around the edges instantly makes your painting look better. It's amazing. Never underestimate the power of a crispy clean edge. The next step I want to add here is my dragons and that's going to be a tricky one. You may have noticed that I'd drawn them on my two test runs earlier. Try not to get paint on your eraser. Um, whoops, it's okay because I have this cream coloured correction tape that is perfectly matching the pages of my book but better to just not smear paint on your book in the first place. I went ahead and made myself a sticker sheet here for this setup. I wasn't overly fussed with my hand-drawn dragons. I'd been using a reference of some dragon silhouettes and it was going okay, but I thought I could do better than this if I had dragon stickers, but I didn't have any that were correct. So I jumped on Canva, I found some dragon silhouettes and I found a font that I liked, it's called Wednesday. And I went ahead and I made myself a sticker sheet with my Cricut, which I very rarely use and really should use more. And it didn't go too badly. I don't think I cut as well as I could have on this sticker paper. I need some more practice, but it went better than my last attempt at kiss cut stickers, so that's a good thing. I also went ahead and printed titles for each of the sections I'm going to set up on the subsequent pages and titles for each day of the week for four weeks worth of weeklies as well so I'm all set when it comes time to set up our weeklies. I'm just placing the dragons in places that feel good to my eye. This is maybe ever so slightly unintentionally inspired by some of the Throne of Glass book covers. 
But basically anywhere I have a painted sunset in this setup, I wanna make sure I've also got a dragon. And now the paint is actually dry, so it will be much easier for me to jump in and erase my pencil lines. That's actually the cover spread done. So we're gonna move on to the next page. This one is for goals, favorites, and musings on the left. And we're gonna set up the spending log on the right at the same time as well, just so that I can do all of my painting in one go and have it all dry at the same time. These are very standard layouts for me. So on the left page, the goals, favorites and musings part is just a box that I've divided into three. Musings has the biggest section of these. Goals is for writing down goals. Favorites is for writing down anything that I'm enjoying this month. And musings is for little snapshots of what's on my mind. I thought I was being smart by doing all of this part first and then going in with the paint, but what I didn't realize is that by putting my stickers down first and then putting washi tape on top of them to block out the areas I didn't wanna get paint on, I would also be peeling up my stickers along with the washi tape later, but it all came together fine. I could just peel the stickers off the washi tape and put them back down, so nothing was ruined, which is nice. Also setting up the spending log on the right here, I'm using my gray marker for all of these lines because I just felt like that would be nice and soft, even though all my text will be this bold black kind of black letter font. The tables here that I'm doing for the spending log, that's actually two tables right next to each other with no gap in the middle. It makes sense to me, so it's fine. The widest of the columns is item. That's where I'm going to write down anything that I buy, just a short description of what it was. The next category column is for categorizing those purchases into something that makes sense to me. And then the third one is cost, which is obviously how much money I spent on the thing. And at the end of the month, I tally it all up by category and I can transfer it over to my overall cash flow spread at the beginning of the journal. And that helps me keep track of where my money goes over the course of the year. Once I've got all these areas masked off, we'll jump back in and do some more painting. I'm gonna to stick to the same kind of orange and purple gradient idea, but I'm not gonna do wet on wet this time. I'm gonna go in on some dry paper instead. Just like last time, I'm matching the boxes that I'm going to be painting in to the width of the boxes that are functional on the page. So I'm matching it to the goals, favorites, and musing section here. I'm also matching it with the top and bottom of the spending log table on the opposite page. And I'm using the column on the right, just like I did previously on the calendar page to be where I put my painting on the right side. I'm speeding through it a little bit more this time because I feel like this video would get very long and very monotonous if I didn't. So we've got some speed painting this time, although it was not speed painting in real time for me. Check out that piece of washi tape that as I peel it off, it takes the goals and the musings parts with it. Oh, that was not, there it goes. That was not what I wanted here, but it has left a little bit of an imprint of the ink on the backside, the sticky part of the washi tape, but it's actually fine. The stickers just went back down anyway. So I guess I got away with it this time. Things to be wary of next time. Those of us who have cutting machines like the Cricut or the Silhouette or anything like that, let me know, do you use yours a lot and do you use it for journaling things? I'm really curious because I feel like I, I could be using mine more. Also, I'd missed a little patch there, so I thought I would fill that in. We need to add some headings over here for the spending log once this is all dried down very nicely. This actually, I let it dry overnight, if I'm being totally honest here. And we need to add some dragons in each one of these colorful spaces too. I always like to have my dragons placed so that they're sort of flying in towards the middle of the book rather than flying off the page, if that makes sense. I think that's a carryover thing from my secret double life as a wedding photographer. It's kind of an album design thing. If there's a portrait, you don't want to have the person looking off the page, if that makes sense. So same for dragons, I guess. Moving on now to the last spread we're gonna set up in this video. This is gonna be my first weekly. This is one of my absolute favorite layouts. It has squares for each day and then some squares for decoration. And I stole it shamelessly from the wonderful Ruthie Journals on Instagram. She's 
at roofie.journals and her weekly layouts are just the most amazing so I steal from her frequently. I'm going to be adding paint into five of these boxes. We kind of have 12 boxes all up here. So seven of them are for days of the week for actual planning purposes and the others are for decoration. So I thought it would be fun to try and have an overall gradient from the purple at the top of the page down to the yellow orange at the very bottom of the page. Kind of like if you were looking through a window but parts of it were covered with bits of paper like post-it notes or something and those are the parts where the planning happens. So I'm making sure that this middle row, which actually only has one square for decoration, has the transition there between purple and orange and then the lower ones will be orange and the top ones are going to stay purple. I'm also making it much more pastel this time. I'm using much less saturated, much less contrasty colours, mostly just because that's the way things were left on my palette. It kind of dried overnight so I was working with what was left. I also just love pastel colours so it was fun to kind of bring them in for a variation here. There's still going to be some darker, some more saturated colours as well but it is very nice to play with some soft tones because I am a soft girl. Obviously I am a soft girl who has been very influenced by fantasy novels lately because I'm painting flying dragons in a sunset kind of a setting. So when I was setting up for the live stream, one of my lovely channel members, Shima, asked if we could name one of the dragons Andana, and that made me think, which is a reference to Fourth Wing, for those of you who have read the Empyrean books, you'll be like, yes, I know who that is. So I thought I would open up the floor to you guys and maybe have you help me name the rest of my dragons. I feel like we'd need to have a Smaug in there because he's kind of like an OG dragon, right? If we have Andana, I feel like we must have a Tan, but then I'm kind of out of names already. So help me out. Let me know what you think I should name my dragons. Or do I just give them cat names? Because cats and dragons, as we learned from How to Train Your Dragon, have quite a bit of crossover. soft little vignettes are all done so I can peel up the washi tape that's separating those ones now. I had to switch washi tapes part way through because I ran out of my white one. It's so sad. And then we can erase all of the pencil lines here that I used to plan everything out. And then we can start in with the stickers. We can make sure there are dragons and there are titles for each of these. I've made sure that I've got enough Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday titles for the entire month for all of the weeklies that we will set up on live stream together as well. I always have such a good time setting up weeklies on live with you guys, so I'm looking forward to doing that because I haven't been able to through March, it's been a little bit trickier. I've been rapid locking every day rather than setting up weeklies ahead of time, so I haven't been able to do those live streams, but I'm looking forward to bringing them back for April. Some of my stickers have torn as I've been peeling them up off my page, so that's not ideal, but it's okay, I'm still going to work with them, it's totally fine. And I recently picked up this box of stamps. It has a kind of a round shape with a negative space letter in the middle or number as the case may be. We're gonna use the numbers for this setup. And I thought I'd try them out my favorite way first, which is just to color in the stamp with a black brush pen and then stamp that straight on the page. And it did work, but it wasn't very saturated. And I do find I struggle a little bit with the paper in this journal because it's textured. So with stamps, it doesn't always work the best. I pulled out a stamp pad instead. This one's oil-based, so I try to avoid using it with other water-based things where I can but I think in this situation it will be okay and it actually worked way better than the brush pen so I ended up sticking to that for the rest of these I'll remember that for our live streams and I tried to jump back in with the ink pad for the one and go over it and it sort of worked okay it's a little bit off but that's all right nobody's gonna look that closely now I just need to add a dragon to every one of my colorful spaces and then this setup is actually complete Here's April 2024 in my bullet journal. I'm so happy with this setup. It was really outside my comfort zone to paint so much in my journal, but I think I've done okay. It's really outside my comfort zone as far as colors too, but I do think I can see myself picking this up and using it throughout April. If you'd prefer something a bit more typically Erin, here's a link to April last year in my journal. It was this lovely soft pink kind of a thing. And also my pirate bullet journal setup for April that I did recently in the giveaway journal too. Catch you next week. Bye.